All right, so let's put our new knowledge to the test. And look at the power supply I have right here, which is a made in China SP360 24 volts, 360 watt, or so they say, uh, 24 volt power supply, open frame. Um, chose this obviously last time I did uh, an open frame power supply and uh, wanted to have a bit of a comparison between the two. So, first of all, let's look at the externals. Uh, obviously, there's a fan here, uh, there's a seal I, I looked inside already before I turn it on because don't turn it on, etc. Um, first thing we see, and this is pretty funny, uh, this is the input and output side, and what you can see here is that the AC input is right next to the DC output, and we're still the, well, I guess not worse. The This is line neutral ground, so they're kind of hedging their bets. Uh, line voltage is essentially the only thing that's theoretically uh, dangerous. Neutral should be very close to ground, so this is kind of safe to put next to each other. And then ground, probably the negative voltage here is grounded as well, so... And still, I really don't like having mains voltage so close to the output. Uh, this, this distance between here, especially when you have like a wire here that's clamped in and like this screws a little bit higher and there's there's this little plastic lip here but it's obviously there's a lot of dust and gunk in between eh, that's not enough clearance and this is definitely not enough clearance between the uh, uh, main screws so major negative points for that also, they have an adjustment pot here, um, but not just the adjustment pot. There are some components here that you can, like, uh, touch with your screwdriver as you're adjusting. Eh. Pretty crappy design. So I opened the case, and I just wanted to uh, point out some minutia of... Um, uh, enclosure design here. So this enclosure, this is just box standard. Uh, these holes are all, they're not machined or anything. Uh, they punch these with punching dies. There is a big, big metal piece that just rams through the metal. The metal is supported underneath and it punches out this little piece of metal. And one of the ways to assess uh, how good the quality of a power supply is, is just to look at the edges of these punching holes. And actually, these are really good for uh, for such a low cost power supply. This is a basically a perfect uh, finish on these holes. There are very 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 tiny burrs, but they, they are like I can't feel them. Like I can see there is there are very slight marks on there, but they're well finished. They're not sharp at all. As for the fan, this is a Long Cheng 14 volts. 15 or 0 0.15 amps 14 volts in a 24 volt power supply uh, Huh So on to the actual guts of the power supply uh, this is where the uh, power comes in and Just as a general rule Jesus diode bridges it was uh, It was gunked to this like in a it, it was put in crooked and then gunked to the um, common mode choke. That's a uh, very crappy design. I guess they they just looked at the closest possible way <laughs> to uh, to stabilize this. That's crappy. Anyway, if you want to see where the input filter is, um, look at everything that is before the bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifiers are always very easy to uh, identify. There are these, there are these, these large uh, black squares with a plus and a minus on it usually. Uh, everything before that is the input filter and this is piddly. You can already see there is just almost only empty space. We've got a fuse here. We seem to have an MOV. 
which is uh, over voltage protection. There's one X2 rated capacitor, uh, obviously used as a common mode capacitor, a common mode choke, and that's it. Uh, so a lot of people have asked for uh, comparisons. So here we have, as a comparison, the previous open frame power supply. Uh, this was, <laughs> this, all of this is the input filter for that one. So it has capacitor, comma mode choke, capacitor, comma mode choke, capacitor, comma mode choke, more capacitors. This is a good, like, if all you have to go by, if you don't know anything about the actual components themselves or the brands or anything, if all you have to go by is just how it looks, just see how many components are in the input filter. Uh, that's usually a good uh, indication of what the quality is. So this has almost nothing. Uh, I can see this and this, these two little blue components. Those are uh, differential mode capacitors. Uh, together with the inductance of this common mode choke, uh, they make sure that differential mode noise uh, doesn't get in. If you don't know what I'm saying, don't worry about it. I'll uh, get into it in a, on a later date. Uh, I guess a fuse is a good thing and an MOV. Like, MOV is a nice touch. Not, not every cheap Chinese spare supply is an MOV. Uh, but this is just not enough. This is going to kick out a lot of noise. And now here we go to the power factor correction. Uh, and it's almost impossible to identify this as power factor correction because um, this is supposed to be a 360 watt power supply. And just as a comparison, so a power factor correction is basically a boost converter, uh, exactly the same converter as, uh, as I showed you before. It's an inductor, and two switches. That's it. Well, that's, these switches probably are one and the same switch and these diodes are probably the actual other switch, but don't worry about it. Uh, I'll get into it on a later date. Um, that's all it is. But this inductor is tiny. This, I, I cannot imagine this gets enough power factor correction done. Again, as a comparison, This is the common or is the um, power factor, factor correction choke of the other. So this tiny thing supposed to do 360 watts. This giant thing supposed to do 250 watts. I bet you this is higher quality, better power factor. And then there is the actual. Uh, DC to DC conversion. So what happens here in a mains power supply It's it is an AC to DC power supply. Obviously your mains input is AC uh, in our case It's 50 Hertz 230 volts AC But this converter or this transformer what it does is it converts DC to DC because power comes in gets filtered gets rectified so from here on out, it's only DC. It's a high voltage DC, but it is DC. And it's put into these capacitors. And these are the input capacitor to make sure that the input is always at a high voltage. Then there is the transformer, which acts as our inductor in our uh, power supply. And here is the switch. Wait a second. Yeah, so actually, one of these transistors is the actual switching transistor, uh, which the current path has to go all the way to this transformer. There's a lot of parasitics in here, so this means it's going to get pretty bad performance. And then it's rectified by only one of these diodes to 24 volts. This is never going to produce 360 watts, even at 24 volts. I mean, higher output voltage means lower output current, so you don't need as big of a diode, but just this one diode for 360 watts compared to three diodes for 250, you know for sure that for one, efficiency is going to be low, and for two, it's never going to get to 360 watts. Um, then on the output filter side, we have this really, really big inductor. 
and these capacitors and this forms an LC filter which is pretty effective at blocking out noise on this side. Um, now it's very hard to say how good quote-unquote uh, the output filter is just by looking at these well one of the ways to see how good it is is to see that this is just flapping around they should have gone to dub but the easiest way to see how good a power supply is on the output side is to look at the capacitors I've had a rant about this before input capacitors so the high voltage capacitors here they don't really matter what really matters is these capacitors and you want to have a good brand you want to have uh, Nippon Chemicon, Rubicon, Nichicon, one of the Japanese manufacturers is always good uh, Vichy BC Components is always good um, those kinds of brands. Name brands you're pretty much guaranteed that they have chosen a good choice here they've put in a Chong X brand with vent, like vent. So that's an actual. Uh, these vents on top of the capacitors, they're not a feature. They're a, well, I guess they're a safety feature. If these capacitors dry out due to usually abuse or the wrong choice or too high current or whatever, uh, they tend to vent out of these uh, top vent holes. That's not a feature. That's not something you should put on your capacitor as a feature. <laughs> That's crazy. Another big no-no in this power supply is they put this, this resistor here. And this resistor, uh, let me see, it looks like a low but not very low, uh, like four... I'm sorry, I'm slightly colorblind. I cannot see which uh, band that is. Looks like a hundred and... No. Four... Pretty sure it's a 470 ohm resistor. So this, this loads up the output uh, so that the power supply always has a minimum load on it. This means this resistor is going to get hot. And it's tucked up right to these capacitors. And that's a bad thing because the capacitors are basically the only non-solid state thing in a power supply. There is a liquid in here and if that liquid boil, boils off the capacitor goes bad and vents. So you want to keep capacitors as cool as possible at all times. Even high temperature rated electrolytic capacitors they always need to be as cool as possible. So this resistor, I mean they have so much space in this power supply. They've got to put it here. But what they did put here is as it looks like they put some current shunts here. So I guess it does have overcurrent protection, otherwise why would you go through the trouble of putting in current shunts? Um, but, jeez, that resistor is really bad design. And as I mentioned before, another way to assess uh, power supply quality is just to look at components and see if they're well tied down. Because something like this, like the wires on this, they're uh, they're coated. The, these wires. This is not bare copper. These wires are coated with like very thin enamel coating, so they can have a little bit of abuse. But if this power supply gets a shock and this inductor suddenly gets knocked into this screw, which is grounded, and this has the power supply voltage on it, it's going to fail on the output. Like this diode is going to burn through definitely and you're gonna have a broken power supply. And this is, this is possible, like I can push it almost towards the screw, like there's a centimeter in there now and there's only like one or two millimeters distance between the wires of this coil and that screw. That's a shorting danger. And not a small one either. Like people do this, people plunk down power supplies, especially because this, these open frame power supplies are used for industrial equipment. And there are other areas where the same thing happens, like these, these transistors, which are probably used as gate drive transistors. Um, they're just flapping in the breeze. They can just oscillate uh, as components oscillate, the legs can break off. Uh, if the whole component breaks off and nothing else fails, uh, you can have a shorting um, 
hazard like one of these resistors these resistors are really loose these capacitors they did gunk it down they do have the uh, like the elastic material to uh, gunk down components and make sure they don't move they just didn't apply it anywhere where it's needed because these capacitors they will stand up by themselves they have a lot of mass behind them but they're also very well secured with the solder connections uh, these kinds of components like the bridge rectifier was going down technically but this is also just going to get hot and they did have this like they obviously thought of putting in a um, heat sink but there are no mounting holes for the heat sink so this heat sink would have just weighed down this bridge rectifier and made it so it can more easily break off really bad design and again as a comparison look here this giant output inductor, they're going to down. They know what they're doing. And anything that it could bump up against, first of all, they put tape around it. And all the other components that it can bump against also have tape or are made of plastic. Very good design. The only thing, obviously, I uh, said last time, they do have some gunk in between these capacitors, but this one still loosey-goosey. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. By the way, uh, thanks for all the new subscribers. Uh, <laughs> I kind of didn't expect it to take off this quickly. Uh, I got like 150 new subscribers and a couple thousand views on my first two videos. So, uh, really good. I hope this uh, channel will be a success. Anyway, see ya.